Welcome back to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Now, when it comes to high-level Zerk versus Zerk, it really doesn't get much better than these two pro gamers. What I like about this particular matchup is that both of them are very successful. They've earned hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years, but they also play the game a little bit differently. Generally speaking, the South Korean players play the game a little bit differently than, for example, the Europeans, and I feel like it's going to be a fun clash of playstyles. Now, I obviously haven't seen this game yet myself either, but many of you have recommended this match when it was played during the TSL number 6. Now, I'll talk about that a little more in just a bit. But spawning here in the top right-hand corner of the map, Giganathan. Playing with the blue Zerg drones from South Korea, we have one of the most dominant StarCraft players from that region, and his nickname is Dark. In case you're new to StarCraft 2, or maybe you're just unfamiliar, Dark was the world champion of StarCraft back in 2019. He has won many GSL codesses, and he's basically won, let me see, $802,000 in tournament earnings alone. The guy's ridiculous, and as of me making this video, he's considered to be the number three Zerg on the planet. Now, in most matchups, he's gonna be the favored one. However, in this particular game, I'm not entirely sure if that's the case, because spawning here in the opposite corner with the red Zerg drones from Finland, we have the player who by many is considered to be the greatest of all time. He's the GOAT of StarCraft 2, and his name is Serol. Alrighty, now, Serol has won basically everything but a GSL code S. The main reason, I think, for that is that a GSL code S is a tournament that takes place over the course of, like, three months. And Serol, obviously, living in Finland, I mean, the, the tournament prize pool is probably not big enough for him to commit that much time uh, to being in South Korea. But he's won basically everything other than a GSL code S. So, he's the world champion of StarCraft in 2018, and as of me making this video on Aligalek, he's considered to be the number one in the world. And he has been for quite some time. He's got, as far as tournament earnings alone, goes roughly $902,000, which uh, puts him uh, about 100000 ahead of Dark. But at the very least, it goes to show that both of these have been very successful throughout their careers. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, Loco, what about Raynor? And Raynor versus Serral, obviously, or Raynor versus Dark is a fantastic matchup. But I feel like this one especially is, is just a little more interesting because they play the game a bit differently. Serral and Raynor seem to have very like similar approaches in this matchup. And um, yeah, Dark and Serral certainly do play the game somewhat differently. So let's talk about that. In general, I've been joking a lot, especially over at the live stream, that on the North American StarCraft II ladder, people love to cheese and just play hyper-aggressively, right? Now, while I think that's true if you compare it to Europe, it's certainly not true if you compare it to the Asian StarCraft ladder. The South Korean StarCraft ladder is ridiculously cheesy. It seems like the general mindset is, if I can end the game at the 3 minute mark, why would I wait until 10? Um, <laughs> it's, it's very, very difficult uh, to rank up on that ladder if you can't play defensively. And that shines through, for the most part as well, at the highest level. So a lot of the top level Korean players love to play very, very aggressively. They love to win by out multitasking the opponent, for example, if you're... If you're talking about Bion, he's very good at multitasking and just hitting his opponent at like three plus different areas at once. Um, and they like to play the game, yeah, quite quite aggressively. In the meantime, what's the best analogy for Serral? Serral Serral's like, a, he's like a sponge, okay? He's very good at absorbing a lot of different attacks and squeezing out as many workers as he possibly can before he needs to start making armies. So he's very good at squeezing out all of these little guys and then dealing with the, uh, the, the limited amount of scouting intel that he can get and recognizing exactly what it is the opponent is going for, and then squeezing out the maximum value. Now, obviously, you know, that's just uh, a general concept, even though, you know, I would say Serral is oftentimes the more defensive player than Dark. He's very good at playing aggressively, and he has been doing that a lot more recently, especially over the last couple of months. He's been actually, uh, yeah, cheesing quite a bit, and Dark, of course, perfectly capable of playing quite uh, defensively as well. Now, already, we see a bit of a build order deviation, so... A lair has been started here quite early by Dark, actually. This is uh, definitely a lair that is indicating a timing of a quick spire. And this is what I mean. Serral's very good at scouting this sort of thing out. So what does he see right now? He sees that there's two structures on the other side of the map at a different time than his own, right? He probably recognizes the timing of these different structures and sees that something might just be a little bit off. Already, look at that. He started the Roach Warren quite early, he started additional gases right now as well, but he's skipping the lair entirely and he's making four overlords. That means that Serral is planning on going for, I think, a Roach... Yeah, a Roach push to the other side of the map. 
Serral sees the timing at which this upgrade starts as well, which is huge. And once again, he's now checking over at the third base with a Zerkling to confirm how many workers there are in total. Dark does the same thing now too, but the question is, is he going to be able to get Mutas out in time to defend against the Roaches that are currently on the production tab? Alrighty. Look at the Overlord spread as well, by the way, on the minimap. Nothing's really gonna go unnoticed at this point. Obviously, obviously, uh, oh, that's uh, a nice scout actually by Dark. Obviously, if you're the Muta player, you can very easily kill your opponent's, uh, your opponent's OVs. So, Serral's gonna have to get some work done here. Already, the third base has been evacuated here by Dark, so he saw the units moving out. Serral decides to morph in a couple Banelinks as well, and he's planning on busting straight through this front wall here of the Zerg player from Korea. Seven spine crawlers though are coming up. Spire is just about to finish. So Muras take a long time though. Muras are not very quick when it comes to killing like these these roaches. Roach Warren over here will be killed relatively easily. There's quite a lot of defensive banes here as well for Dark. Seven flippy flappies are gonna be joining the battlefield here very shortly. But Sarah has been going through this rather slowly and yeah, seven of these uh, these spines are done now. Nice little bit of Baneling Micro as well. What Serral is really looking for right now is just to deal as much damage here as possible, right? He's looking to uh, follow this up right now with a Ling Flot as well. And the question is, is Dark going to be able to defend this? And if he is, how much damage is he going to take in the process? So six drones end up going down here so far. There's a lot more Zerklings running across the map. Serral has been non-stop producing those Zerklings as well. And he's looking to actually end this game right here, right now. I'm not entirely convinced that he's got enough. Third base, though, was killed as well in the process by those Zerklings that we saw joining the fray a little while later after the Banelings from Dark were taken out of the equation. But it looks like with this amount of Mutas, eventually everything will be cleaned up. Oh, okay. I was going to say, if these Zerklings for some reason manage to stay alive, that would be insane. I already love this as well. Serral setting up a, uh, a hit squad of units here on the left-hand side. This was probably spotted by Dark, but at the very least, this is once again going to give the opportunity to potentially snipe the third base one more time. There you go. It's going to force those Mutas to stay home as well, and it now gives Serral a lot of time to, uh, to prepare the defense. Alrighty, so speaking of defense, he's got the Lair coming up himself right now, going for a lot of Spore Crawlers, adding on additional Queens here too. I've always felt that this is the situation that Serral is very good at, but it's a... Uh, it's also one that he's not entirely confident about. I've seen him lose in this scenario many times before. Because when you look at the... You know, if you look at the losses right now, you might say, Okay, yeah, Dark has lost way too much, right? But the worker counts, I mean, they're, they're not looking absolutely awful. And Dark is going to have full map control here for quite some time. All of the OVs right now uh, for Serral have been pushed back as well. And if you look at his minimap vision at this point, I mean... He's basically got a yeah, cower, uh, cower in fear right now for at least a little while longer. Alright, so what's Dark's plan here? Usually you have a couple different options. Late game Zerk is all about the Hydra, the Lurker and the Viper. So Hydra, Lurker, Viper basically kills everything. The problem is that it's rather expensive to get to. So Dark has, I would say, two options right now. Either he... Tries to get a lot of economy himself and transitions towards Hydra Lurker Viper himself. Or he tries to prevent his opponent from grabbing additional expansions and sort of contain them on three bases at most. Because Hydra Lurker Viper is not really something that you can afford off of only three of these expansions. Oof. I guess two expansions actually. Three bases in total, right? But you need about eight gases before you can properly start affording Hydra Lurker Viper. Already though, the Hive has started up here for Serral. So he is looking to get at least some of those late game upgrades. But it's going to be very difficult for him to afford doing so. Dark in the meantime though, has got the fourth base up completely uncontested. I mean, I think there was an Overseer looking at it. But he's going to be able to do um, yeah, whatever he likes for uh, at least a while. Serral, though, very good at playing this defensive style when things are going his way, right? It's very easy to mess up and to accidentally, you know, end up losing a whole bunch of drones, for example. But the Roaches, once again, are in position to deal with those Banelings here as well. A couple of Zerklings running over towards the third base here of Dark. They might get a couple drones. In the meantime, there's a couple links in the top left hand corner as well. But I think the most that this is doing right now is that Dark is forced to go back with his Mutalisks. And this gives a bunch of time for Serral to start up his own 4th base as well. So he can start pushing the creep forward. And if the Queens can close the distance to watch that 4th, life's gonna be at least more manageable. Hive is done. 
And with that, we have four Vipers coming up. Now, Vipers have a spell called Parasitic Bomb. Parasitic Bomb deals 120 area of effect damage to flying units. And Mutas just so happen to have 120 life. They do regenerate a little bit of life, so it's not like you can kill them with one Parasitic Bomb, but it is a very, very scary spell for a, uh, a Mutalist player. It's a lot of queens, by the way, man. Look at that. <laughs> 11 queens. Marching on the creep right now for Serral. Now, once again, I want to emphasize how little Serral actually sees, right? So he's got to predict where those Mutas are going to go. Generally speaking, they go from point A all the way around to point B over here, right? Or maybe to the main base. So it's going to be easier here as these Vipers accumulate energy, but it's not, an, uh, yeah, not a very straightforward, situ or straightforward situation right now to be in if you are Serral. All right. So here's those, uh, those Vipers looking for a Parasitic Bomb. Dark obviously can split those units up as well. But he's got to be very careful. Now, it looks like Dark has decided that he's going to take the more aggressive approach. Not too surprising, I suppose, considering what we talked about earlier. Um, rather than going for Hydro Lurker Viper himself, he has decided that he's going to try and get the economical advantage and play the very cost-inefficient style, where you basically try and, uh, yeah, just roll your opponent to death, right? You basically want to try and grab that superior economy, knowing very well that you're not going to be trading very efficiently. You can oftentimes still grab a, a win if you uh, can prevent your opponent from mining a whole lot of resources. So, Bailing Speed is just about to finish up. He's going for the additional Flippy Flappy upgrades as well, so the Mutas are going to be quite a bit more powerful here with plus two Flyer upgrades, and he's also going to get plus two Melee here finished up in just about a minute or so. Now, he's desperately looking here to get some damage done. But look at that. Oh, I love this. Serral's looking real good here. He's got a couple of Lurkers added into the mix right now, too. Um, I think there were actually also some Banelings that were attempted to roll by over there at the uh, the fourth base. But these Lurkers obviously shoot Spines underground. And they're going to be able to kill those Banelings very, very efficiently. I'm liking this position here for Serral more and more. Usually the follow-up here... Ooh, love. Oh, that's so neat. Usually the follow-up here for uh, for Dark is going to be Ultralisks. So another cost-inefficient unit, but look at this. He's ready to start rolling. Now, I think these are scouting bailings. They're looking how many lurkers there are. Enough is the answer. It looks to me like Dark really wants to commit here to fighting, but I'm not sure exactly if that's the best move. I mean, it's a lot of lurkers, and there's a bunch of vipers here as well. I love the fact that the roaches are still ready to roll forward as well. Look at the defense. Oh, he needs to only squeeze in a couple, though. Oh, <laughs> that's so close, but great splits there by Serral. Keeps pretty much all of those drones alive. Plus two melee was done there, so those... Uh, those Banelings would have one-shot those drones. Very, very, very close call. A couple of changelings over here as well. We'll scout out roughly what's going on, but obviously the lurkers are burrowed on the ground, so not that much intel. Once again, the Banelings are looking to go around. My god. Serral's scary good at defending his bases. Anyways, this is all good for Dark, though, right? Dark has got five bases up himself. He's up to 88 workers here. So all he needs to do at this point is prevent a fifth base here from Serral. Serral is going to be able to get, I would say, like one big maxed out army with Hydro Lurker Viper. But that's really where, you know, that's going to end. So as long as Dark can defend that, he's going to be all right. Serral's adding another... Uh... Wow. Another uh, weapon right now to his arsenal. It's going to be the Burrowed Roaches. So, Burrow right here on the hatchery and then also the Tunneling Claws upgrade. It allows the Roaches to move underground. There's the Ultra Cavern, though, on the other side of the map. Plus three melee and also the Adrenal Glance upgrade coming up here. As well as the sixth hatchery here for Dark. Let's see how this is going to go. Rinse and repeat at this point, I suppose. This is a, a brave drone. This drone really wants to become a hatchery. Not an easy move to make, though. Sarah looks like he wants to maybe trade out at least a couple of those roaches, although this is not a bad trade, to be honest. You can see he's now venturing a little bit further out into the map. Now he's got a uh, a good set of units defending at home. I think the burrow upgrade was just shown here to, yeah, to Dark, so Dark knows that there's a bunch of tunneling clawed roaches going to watch his side of the map, but once more, this is exactly what Serral does to buy time. We saw that earlier as well with the Ling run by. He's now double expending to watch the fifth base. He only really needs to keep one of these two expansions alive, but he's buying time, right? He's just making sure that these Mutas and whatever else Dark has are gonna be staying at home so the creep can connect a little bit easier and so that Serral can maybe continue mining here for a little while longer. 
Dark's bank, though, is starting to be, uh, yeah, quite impressive here. He's getting to the point where he can remax this army that he's got multiple times. Everything is quite expendable but the mutas, so if he uh, loses all of the mutas here, that would, that would kind of suck. It's not what you want, but yeah, it's very manageable. Now, these are very well upgraded Zerklings here from Dark. Uh, 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 okay. This base will stay up for now. But it only takes a handful of uh, Zerklings at this point to kill a hatchery. Base in the bottom right hand corner will probably not stay up, but I don't know if Dark at this point realizes that that one also hasn't been acquired. I don't think Sarah was planning actually on keeping both of those alive, but I kind of dig it. One cheeky lurker once again just buying time. Sorry buddy, you were just a means to an end. There's Overseer still going all, the way, all over the place. A Roach over here as well, just being a nuisance. Giving Sarah the time that he needs to start up those new bases. And really secure his foothold there. Alrighty. So look at this, right? We are, we're watching a ZVZ, but we have a Roach Hydra Lurker Viper Army going up against a Mutaling Bane Ultra Force. Isn't that neat? High level Zerg versus Zerg really is fantastic. It's much harder to play though than, uh, than you would imagine. Because most of the games that you will play on the ladder of ZVZ are just going to end with the Zergling and Baneling phase. And you might feel inspired after watching this game and then you get cheesed 17 times in a row in this matchup. Um, <laughs> like these games only really occur at, uh, at high level. Alright, so let's see how this goes. Parasitic Bomb. Parasitic Bomb on those Mutas. Look how much damage they take. Ultras though. Ooh, they are not affected by Blinding Cloud because they are melee units. So Blinding Cloud reduces the range of a lot of those units back down to one. But all he really was looking for right there is to zone away the majority of the Red Zerg army so the base in the bottom left-hand corner can be killed. Now, once again, I don't think that Dark knows. Yeah, this is a big mistake. He doesn't know about the base in the bottom right-hand corner. He really needs to figure that sort of thing out. Seven additional Ultras are coming up, though. Let us have a look right now at the resources lost. So you can see that, um, yeah, already Dark is starting to fall behind in that regard. He's losing more resources here than his opponent. But Ultras just do not trade well. Ultras just do not do a very good job at trading. Right now, finally, we see a, uh, a hit squad moving on over towards the bottom right. I'm assuming he's going to check this out. He really needs to. Oh, he doesn't know about that base. Hmm. I think Sarah is also knowing uh, that his base will probably not stay up for very long. Parasitic Bomb. Okay. He hasn't actually sent a whole lot of drones there, so I'm assuming he's probably thinking that it won't really stay up for that long anyway. Look at the Queens marching off creep. Here come the Ultras, though. Ooh, this is a very, very scary Zerk army here. For both players, actually. Blinding Clouds right now on the Queens. They're gonna have a very hard time connecting with this army. Parasitic Bomb once again comes up on the Mutalisks. Ultras, though, desperately trying to get some damage in. I mean, there's a lot of Ultras still alive, but at very, very low HP. And as I said that, I'm pretty sure we saw, like, a couple more pop. Nine additional Ultras are coming up right now for Dark? Dark, slow down, my man. A couple Roaches in the meantime, of course. The three o'clock position, I would say. Getting a couple more kills here because, I mean, multitasking only one army at once. That's insane. And this is where that cost efficiency is gonna get worse. I am very surprised that the base in the bottom right hand corner is still completely unscouted. I don't think Dark thinks that Sarah would be brave enough to expend to watch two five or two fifth bases right at once, right? Like, he send in the, uh, the tunnel cloud roaches and then, you know, he double expend it. Sarah's really only trying to hold on to this base over here. He just needs one. He doesn't need to. But uh, the fact that Dark hasn't even checked for it is quite impressive. Now, Ultras do do quite a... Well, these are low HP Ultras. That doesn't... Oh, my God. That's actually a misplay there for, uh, for Dark. Uh, Ultras, generally speaking, trade extremely well against Roaches. But, yeah, when there are red head points, uh, you, you need to heal them up, right? You, you can't just continue going there. I love the fact that Dark is now also adding Vipers into... Well, uh, he's already had that obviously for a bit, but I love the fact that he's sending that with the main armies right now. But these traits are not what you're looking for. At the same time, though, ooh, Zerklings managed to just run through the natural, past a whole bunch of Lurkers, and with the Adrenal Glance and the plus three melee upgrades, they're going to be able to kill a lot of those units very easily. Nice run right, uh, run by, right there by Dark, who now uh, ends up killing his opponent's Hive. And that means that there's not going to be any additional Vipers right now for Serral until he resecures that structure. Bottom right-hand corner will finally be scouted. 
This is a bit of a trap, though, because those Ultras can definitely be locked up in there. Yeah, that's exactly what Serral is looking to do right now. Looking to make sure that these units cannot leave. And Ultras don't deal that much damage to structures. It almost feels like Zerklings are better at killing, uh, yeah, at killing a, a hatchery here than the other way around. At the same time, though, Dark obviously has got the more mobile army, so he's sending units towards the top left and corner, but... He's gonna have to once again deal with roaches. The, these roaches are actually really neat. Like, generally speaking, once we arrive at Hydra Lurker, the time for the roach has ended. <laughs> right? The time for the roach has, uh, has disappeared. But I really like what Serral is doing here. Constantly adding on a couple more. Just to, uh, you know, keep the opponent occupied. I don't think he's got those hotkeys, or maybe he does. It's kind of difficult to hotkey all of this. But yeah, he's actually still mixing in quite a few roaches. 21 of them in total. Not to be underestimated. If you spread them out, they actually deal reasonably well with, uh, with Ultras. Ooh, okay. There's a new Hive that's coming up, but there's no way that that one is going to finish up, so... Sarah will end up losing that base. At the same time, the Ultralisks are moving on over to the mining base here on the left side of the screen. Oof. Very, very dangerous. Parasitic Bomb even right now on... Okay. <laughs> on both Vipers as well as Overseers. A little bit of a strange situation to be in, but the base is still up. 13 drones end up going down, though. Sarah already recreated a second Lurker Den. He's now going for his third lair. Just because he needs to get a Hive up if he wants to eventually go back into uh, Viper production. He's only got a handful remaining right now, but they're still alive. And I guess that's the most important part. Roaches will be able to snipe the base over here. You can see that Dark right now has taken every single base on his side of the map. And he's trying to see if he can grab another one as well. Somewhere out there. I don't know if you can just go ahead and push into this expansion, but he's going to try. Blinding Cloud once again, forcing those Roaches to move forward. Reducing their range down to one. But I think so far, this choke point over here, I love the addition right now actually of the Evo Chamber in that location as well. Forcing those Ultras to go through a choke point. And once more, Serral is looking extremely good defensively. I just want to emphasize how easy it is to accidentally lose everything. Oh, that's beautiful. Like, it takes literally one of those groups of Banelings to roll into a mineral line for this to be game over for Serral. But Serral has been defending dozens of them, and he seems to be doing so very, very easily and without much of a problem. He's now getting adventurers out onto the map as well, and you know what? I don't mind it. Look at the resources lost right now. Cost efficiency here of this, uh, this Ultraling Bane Muta army is... Yeah, nowhere to be seen anymore. How many Mutas actually do we still have? Zero. Really? Oh yeah, all of the Mutas ended up going down. Insane. Maybe that's also the reason why Serral is adding on Roaches again. It's like, wait a second, if I don't, you know, they're doing quite alright. I love the fact actually that he's added on so many Evo Chambers to create choke points. Look at that. Ah, oh, really wonderful play. Now, Serral is going to be forced to back off. I mean, he doesn't really need to hold on to this location at all because there's nothing there. A couple of Parasitic, or sorry, yeah, a couple of Parasitic Bombs and then also those, uh, those... Shots from the spore crawlers will kill a few of the vipers. <sighs> Another ultra goes down. Lurker, for some reason, made its way towards the top left and corner of the map. Serral has now taken most of the bases on his side as well. Whenever it's an, uh, an even economy and you're trading more efficiently, that's a good situation to be in. Technically speaking, Dark has one more base, but this base is not mining just yet. There's one more expansion over here on the right-hand side that has been, uh... Well, Dark tried to acquire it earlier, but it's not been mined from just yet. Look at Serral, man. Constantly sending units all over the map. Look at the actions per minute here as well. <laughs> this is literally 10 buttons a second. I just want to emphasize that. Gotta play fast! My god, is he being obnoxious here? Like, the player that's playing the uh, the Ling Ultra style, right, and the Mutas earlier, they're supposed to be the one that has the, uh, <laughs> the map control. And Dark had the map control earlier, but it's been slipping through his fingers for the last, I would say, like, 14 or so minutes. <laughs> he did have it for a little bit when the Mutas first came out, but Serral, for some reason, has been, uh, has been able to fight that back. And these Ultras, yeah, they're not gonna go back. You need more queens in order to transfuse those bad boys back up to full health as well. Now, there are a couple of high-energy queens, four of them in total right now, but they have not been utilized for quite some time. And I think that is something we can uh, we can criticize Dark for, because Serral has been slowly picking this one apart just by not dying to stuff. I think most of the games that Dark plays, right, 
he can win just by overwhelming his opponents with sheer amounts of stuff. However, it becomes very difficult when you're going up against one of the very best, and they're, uh, you know, they're on point. Dark is gonna have to deal with a very, very scary Zerg force over here. Serral doing the thing that Terran players do with siege tanks. Slowly pushes the tanks forward one at a time. Doesn't really want to be moving all of them, because if you uproot all of them, obviously, it becomes a bit of a problem, too. Parasitic Bomb once again goes up on the Overseers. I guess if you kill the Overseers, there's not going to be any detection anymore, and that means that those Lurkers can continue dealing damage. And there it is. GG is cold. And Serral obtains the victory in this Zerg versus Zerg. Now, during the TSL 6, Serral and Dark faced off two times. In the very first series, it was Serral who came out ahead. However, in the second series, they met in the Grand Finals. And spoiler alert, Dark ended up taking down Serral in a 4-0 fashion. That has not happened in many years. I don't even remember the last time that Serral lost a best of seven series 4-0. I mean, he tends to never lose any of those in the first place. So losing 4-7 or 4-0 is, is just insane. So... I mean, that was on a different day, so I guess Serral was maybe feeling a little bit off, or maybe the time was not entirely great, but... Yeah, the playstyle that Dark, uh, that Dark plays here certainly goes well if uh, the opponent is not capable of defending, but everything does have to be on point for that to work out. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, hit that like button down below. If you want to see more, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.